Hey my loves, welcome back to another new episode of the Positive Vibes show designed to make you happier and of course stronger every single day. So I'm Alice, I'm a life and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs and women. So I do help women in becoming the best version of themselves and in today's episode we do have a special woman. She, she is called Jamie and she is a manifestation coach. So let me tell you a little bit about her. So at the age of 22, she had a pretty much good life and she always had good grades at university. She won at competitions, but she felt that something was wrong with her life and something was missing out. So she, she started thinking about it and she, she just thought that she... She just thought that there was something missing with her life. And this is where her journey to manifestation started. Now here she is. She is an awakened conscious woman like more than ever. And she's helping a lot of women in this world be more clear, focused and confident. And they can manifest anything they want. She has different programs. She has... Uh, She's helping like everyone who needs help, so don't hesitate to reach out to her. So let's dive deep and right into it. Let's welcome together Jamie. Hey Jamie, thank you so much for joining us to today's episode. Um, So I would like to welcome you with so much love to this episode and our show. So, for visitors who don't know much about you, can you tell us a little bit more about you? How did you get started with your manifestation business, manifestation coaching, like in a young age? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. My name is Jamie and I am actually based in Singapore. So, hello from the other side of the world. (laughs) Um, I actually got into manifestation about three years ago and basically I was just craving a fresh perspective for life, like towards life because I was just tired of what the media was telling me, what everyone else was telling me and so I just wished to myself, oh, I really want someone to talk about their perspective of life in a way that intrigues me and I wasn't like finding specifically for manifestation because I had no idea that manifestation was something and it actually (laughs) exists. I had no idea and I haven't actually came across the term manifestation before at that point in time. So I remember very vividly I was just basically on the um, treadmill. I was like walking on the treadmill and I was listening to a podcast and on this podcast she was guesting a manifestation coach like <laughs> like how you're guesting me right now yeah, so good. yeah like I was just listening to that episode and her perspective in terms of like life in general just struck a chord in me and I just felt like oh my gosh this is everything that I needed to hear and then she talked about manifestation and you know the techniques and how it really works and I was like I really need to like find out more about this so that was the starting point of how I got into manifestation but the thing is that because I was still in university when I was um, exposed to manifestation and you know how in university it's all about um, the grades, it's all about um, getting into a corporate job, getting a stable job, that kind of thing and very masculine and practical Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So like I veered off manifestation because I couldn't see both of it click, like I couldn't see myself in a corporate job and using manifestation and I wasn't even like comfortable sharing about what manifestation was to my friends because it's a little bit spiritual and I was so afraid (laughs) yeah and I was so afraid what if they would be like oh what is Jamie doing like she's so weird (laughs) yeah my friend you yeah (laughs) yeah so I kind of like veered away from that but it wasn't only until last year um, I graduated I think last December from uni I was actually majoring in marketing so I was studying business and I thought I was gonna be like a business 
not a business woman, but like a career lady that is in a corporate job, climbing the corporate ladder. So that was my vision <laughs> for myself. And the thing is that during that time, it was also when the pandemic was pretty bad here, all over the world, actually. And it was so hard, so, so hard finding a job. And I was lucky because in the last semester of my university, I was already exposed to manifestation. I got back to it since I had so much time while I was studying at home. Yeah. And I was into personal development. I invested in my first ever like life coach. And that just changed my whole perspective towards life. And if it wasn't because of COVID, I wouldn't I wouldn't have like oh, stepped wow. into my business full time. So that's just a little backstory mm-hmm. about me. It's oh thank you so much for sharing your story. Like it's just amazing how you got into manifestation. And I don't like that word where you said your friends were just seeing it weird because everyone, <laughs> like whenever we tell someone that there is manifestation, there is the law of attraction, they say, what the hell? Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's oh so funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even till today. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People keep saying that, um, no, that this, you know, more pragmatic people like if they are pragmatic they don't believe in it because it's not something they can touch it's not something they can see but it's just something they can feel so this is what makes it uh, complicated for people to believe in it but it works miracles this is what we believe okay so you said you had like um your first life coach how did you get the courage to get a life coach and how did this affect your life like How did it change you to a better person? Oh, I love that question. (laughs) Um, The thing about, the funny story about how I got to my first life coach is that I didn't even know that I needed one. I just knew that there was something in me that was blocking me. So somehow or rather, I... I saw a pattern in my life where I would always get so close to my goals that I set for myself and then somehow I would just stop and and then it didn't happen so looking back now it's actually me sabotaging myself right and what I realized is that because I had a fear in me that you know if I did this or I became better than someone else then you know, that would mean that I'm betraying them or I'm hurting them. Or also another big limiting belief that I had in the past was I'm not good enough. Uh-huh. So I always, always compare myself to other people in yeah. in their like level 100 when I'm at level one. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't get there. It's impossible. And then I just freak myself out. I get so overwhelmed and I just go back to my comfort zone. So Uh that was a pattern in my life that I kept seeing, whether it's in relationships or in, you know, a hobby that I want to pursue or in my career, I would always face the same issues. And um, funnily enough, there was there was this course that I was doing that was actually on transforming um, my relationship with money and in that course it wasn't just talking about money of course it was talking about other stuff like your limiting beliefs so that's how I saw the pattern in my life and so there was this like discovery call that I could hop on with a coach to you know explore more about my limiting beliefs and I hopped on a call and he was pitching to me about a program that they were running but because I had to be there physically which is in Australia so I'm in I'm based in Singapore and the course is in Australia that they usually hold it live and I couldn't go there because of COVID right so I told him that it's impossible I'm not going there and I'm not gonna invest because it's so like uncertain what's gonna happen in the future and when the borders are gonna open so I told him no and that was the end of the conversation. And then one week later, he texted me and he was saying that, oh, um, the founder of this company actually wants to speak to you. Um, and so do you have time to hop on a call? So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll hop on a call. And then he was just telling me that there's this virtual program that they're running. It's a one-on-one coaching. Oh, wow. um, and it's on, yeah, and it's on limited offer because they want to help as many people as possible during COVID. 
and it was this amount and he basically told me to make a decision on the call itself oh and something that's amazing is that i recently at that time got into pulling oracle cards mm-hmm. so in the morning i pulled the oracle card and it's the first few times i'm using it so i'm a little bit like still getting used to it so i pulled the card and the card said yes and then i was like yes to what <laughs> so i opened the book to read like the description of what this card means but basically the description is yes 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 it's wow. not no description it's just yes oh my god this and i was like from universe yeah and i was like what the heck is this trying to tell me so i didn't care about it i put it back into my card deck and then i hopped on a call and then now i know what the yes meant so at that point in time i was wow. like okay sure let's do this so i invested like i think about Two thousand dollars in wow. my first ever life coaching. It was twelve weeks, and it was so transformational because it really helped me to set the foundation of having a balanced perspective towards anything, not just in manifestation but in life, and seeing that there is always plus and minus in everything that we go through. So that kind of is the basis of all my teachings right now, and. It's how I live. Like every single time I, I have a challenge that I'm going through, I will be like, okay, what is the positive in here? And every single time I am, I feel like I am too positive. I try to ground myself in saying, okay, this is a great win, but you know, how can I improve myself? So I'm always like trying to balance myself. Yeah. Wow. That that's amazing. So the whole program changed you a lot. Um, it did. <laughs> But it changed you in terms of what exactly? Like, which aspects of your life were deeply changed, like shifted? Mm, I think um, mostly my response towards challenges is what has changed. So, like, if you were to tell me a year ago that you know there would be COVID, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna ruin my life. How can I, <laughs> how can I really, you know, mitigate that? How can I try my best to not get affected by it? And I would usually try to control my circumstances of how things are gonna play out and just make things as perfect as possible. But having been through that coaching program, I realized that things really happen for us. They didn't happen to us. They happen to serve us. And just looking at that from that perspective and asking, okay, what is this trying to teach me? What is this trying to tell me? How is this going to serve me in the future? Has really helped in terms of creating that inner peace within myself and not like trying to restrict and not restrict, resist. Not trying to resist um, the lessons that are coming through. And yeah, it has just given me a lot of inner peace, if anything. Oh, that, that's amazing. This is something I learned too. Like I learned to trust the process. Like, this is mm-hmm. something I always talk about in my coachings as well. I always tell like my clients, you really have to trust the process that you're going through because yeah. the universe knows why it's sending this to you right now. Yeah. So yeah, th- this is a good part. All right. So c- can you tell us now more about like manifestation? How did you start? How can people, how can like the listeners start using manifestation? What are the things they should know by the beginning? Let's start oh, with the basics. Wow. <laughs> There's so many things to talk about manifestation. Um, I actually do have a free masterclass that I would highly recommend like uh-huh. your listeners if they want to check out. Okay. I will send you the link after our recording. Perfect. So but you yeah, can spell like, it out so that Yeah, I can spill some of it right now. Okay. The first thing that I think a misconception that I want to clear up about manifestation before we dive into some of these things is that a lot of people think that um, manifestation is all about the law of attraction or it's all about just thinking positive and like using the techniques and you're just going to magically manifest. That is a misconception because number one, um, action is needed, of course. You have to meet the universe halfway and then allow the universe to orchestrate for you, but you first have to do the work, right? So that's one of the misconceptions. 
The second misconception is like what I've said, like thinking positive only and being in um, like high vibe, like positive emotions only in order to manifest. And what this has resulted in myself and in a lot of my followers and clients as well is that they tend to feel guilty for feeling those negative emotions or they tend to feel frustrated for feeling a certain way and they get anxious because oh no what if my negative emotions are attracting negative things into my life yeah but the thing about these negative emotions or these positive emotions is that they are neither good or bad they are simply neutral right and they are simply just a tool to help us get back to a state of balance. So like plus one minus one equals to zero. So that's a state of equilibrium, right? That's yeah. that's um, the balance point. So like, like I said, everything, like if you are in a very challenging situation right now, you can see it as negative, right? Yeah. So to balance yourself out, it's about asking okay what is the positive in this what have i gained from this what have i learned and how is this going to serve me that's going to bring you back to a state of balance so yeah there's a very subtle difference between positive thinking and having a balanced perspective in a sense when you're in that positive state um you don't chase for a more positive or force yourself to be positive all the time because that's that's unrealistic like it will only cause you to have a fantasy about life that life is all great (laughs) and rainbows and unicorns so it's about being realistic as well because the human experience we need that contrast in order to bring out um the different feelings that we feel in life so that's a, a misconception that i would like to clear first yeah Okay, perfect. All right. Well, this is clear. (laughs) Yeah, this is clear. And then um, the basics of manifestation, I would say, is understanding that it's basically just like manifestation and what we see in our physical reality now, right, um, is basically a reflection of our inner state. Yes. So our thoughts and our emotions, they are key here in that you need to believe what you're thinking about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because if you don't believe that this is possible for you, then the signal that you're sending to the universe is is incoherent. It's like, yeah, I want this, but I don't know if I can get this, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then all these crazy, like, incoherent signals is going to be sent to the universe. And what the universe does, it doesn't, like, manipulate anything that... It doesn't change any of your, like, thoughts or emotions. It simply reflects it back to you in terms of your physical reality, like what you see, the, the apartment that you're living in, right? The life that you're experiencing right now, it's simply just reflections of of what we have put out there so belief is a key part in terms of manifestation and um a tip that i would share is often a lot of us we try to like a goal that we set for ourselves might be too huge right um in terms of where we are right now (laughs) and the block that we might face is that oh it seems too overwhelming i can't get there and that's why I am resistant to take action. That's what a lot of people feel um, when it's when they're trying to reach for something that they haven't had before or haven't experienced before. Yeah, and a tip is to break it down into smaller and more actionable steps. Since I said that actions is also a key part in manifestation, you need to take the action first. You can't just think about, oh, I want 10K months or, oh, I want to manifest my soulmate or, oh, I want this, I want that, my dream house, my dream car. You have to also take the actions. But in t- you taking actions is about taking actions that you can do right now with the resources that you have you don't have to complicate things in terms of thinking oh i need this in order to have that and in order to take the action just do what you can now so if you need like if you only can afford a free like platform um to use then go and use that free one and milk that free platform so yeah it's about breaking those big goals into smaller goals into more actionable steps that you can take like today or tomorrow I like that (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good way. Yeah, keep going. Well, yeah. And so that is that is about actions and about believing. Oh, and another important thing about manifestation is um, gratitude, like having gratitude for like what you already have and where you already are. Because a lot of times we focus on the fact that it's not here yet. Yeah. You know, like we focus on the fact that oh no, when is my manifestation coming? Like oh, why is it not coming yet? And why am I not experiencing yeah. yet? What's in the universe? Yeah, and that is actually also a part of you that's not trusting your process. Yeah, like when is it coming? You're trying to control when and exactly how, but that's not our job. Our job is basically to take all the inspired action that we can, and once we have taken all of that, we just gotta release and let the universe do its thing. Yeah. Yeah, and on the thing on having great uh, having gratitude is that. Um, you can't like say to yourself that I will only be grateful once this thing has manifested, <laughs> because because if you are coming from that point of view, then you're basically not being grateful for what is already around you or what you already have, yeah. and and how is the universe going to? believe or trust you to be grateful for what's to come in the future if you can't even be grateful for what you already have now yeah yeah so so that is actually the key thing in in manifestation is having gratitude not just in terms of like the good things around you right now but also the challenges like the challenges you want to see it as oh this challenge is is shaping me this challenge is preparing me for the next level and this challenge is exactly what is needed for me to up level and being grateful for like the plus and also the minus that is in your life oh yeah oh my god i just talked about that yesterday with a client of mine uh, and yeah, I told her, like, she sometimes gets low frequency. Mm-hmm. So her vibes just go so down and she feels that there is something missing. There is a piece missing. And then what I told her, I said, you really need to trust the process. Not like a day you trust it and the other day you question it. Because if you <laughs> question it and you trust it at the same time, no, it can't work. Like. It's really like unbalanced, as you just said it. Yeah. But yeah, so a part of um, this, which is complicated, this is what I'm like, I'm coming to a question. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how can we like, or how can you guide people to believe, to believe in like this manifestation, to believe in this process, to trust the process? How how do you Mm -hmm. get them? Like, Oh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because it's not just the surface work, but it's the inner work, the deep healing involved. Yeah. And wow, I just did a TikTok on this, like a TikTok video (laughs) on this, where I was just sharing about the truth about manifestation that not many people talk about, which is the shadow work or, you know, well, other people call it um, healing, inner child healing. I call it overcoming your limiting beliefs and getting to the root of your limiting beliefs and conscious reprogramming Mm -hmm. um yes so so getting to the root of your fears or your limiting beliefs for me it was i was not i'm not good enough that was my limiting belief and that was what kept question like kept me questioning myself and doubting myself in this process and I really had to dig deep into where did this belief actually come from and often it it actually stems from um, a childhood uh, experience that we have gone through in the past um, that sometimes we might not even be aware that we are still holding on to that experience that has hurt us to yeah. in, in some degree or another right and it doesn't have to be a full-on traumatic experience like abuse because trauma can range from so many different things and as a child as like as simple or as small as like your parents or your mom like shouting at you asking you to stop singing because it's horrible yeah. <laughs> that 
can be a traumatic experience for a a child that is like perhaps eight to twelve years old when they are still developing and they're still learning and they're still like absorbing. They're like a sponge absorbing all the values and belief systems and. In their mum shouting that to them, try, trying to tell them to you know stop singing because it's horrible, they will create kind of like a belief that oh they're not good enough something like that. So that this is a very like hypothetical example, but it can really range from so many different things. And in terms of believing in your manifestations, um, a good journal prompt that you can work on is why am I feeling resistance? Or um, what am I exactly afraid of? Or um, what am I doubting? Yeah. So um, dig deep, deep into your fears, your doubts, using these journal prompts, and you might have some clue in terms of oh, um, like why am I exactly feeling this way in terms of. Believing my manifestation, why can't I believe? And um, your limiting belief might show up, right? As you journal on this a couple of times, not just once, because once is basically like surface level. But when you do it again and again, and you ask yourself in different variations of that question. You will see the pattern in terms of oh this thing keeps coming up like I keep feeling like I'm not good enough and that is your limiting belief and from there you dive deep into well you can work with a coach um, a lot of people work with a coach to dive deep into limiting beliefs um, because it's hard to see your own blind spots that's my own personal experience but I do have people like that I've spoken to before that has worked on them. On their own, but that takes a lot, a lot of self awareness, a lot of work and discipline because sometimes it's so painful to go back to that specific scenario or that specific experience. So I would say, yeah, that's basically the work that I do as well to just dig deep into my clients' limiting beliefs and help them balance their perspective and reprogram um, their minds so that they can um, respond. Promptly to these triggers when they come up in future. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. This is something I didn't know before, and you're absolutely right. Like, if there is, oh yeah, like if there is something not going on the right way, it means there is a block somewhere, mm-hmm. and it's well, it it just needs some practice, some like journal pages or. I don't know yeah. some, some different exercises that someone can do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I was wondering. Well, this is a question maybe someone is asking while they are going to listen to this episode. They will wonder how can they start manifesting their dream life. <laughs> well, it's too that is... But like, can you give us some pinpoints or I don't know? Okay, sure. So the first thing. About manifesting your dream life, like dream life is so vague, right? It's yeah. different for so many different people. So, like in my experience, having a clear vision of what your dream life is that is going to help so much because it's like, it's like for example, you want to go on a vacation and you don't even know where you want to go. How's the plane going to bring you there, <laughs> right? So yeah. you first need to know your destination, and then you can plan the steps to. Towards that destination, so that destination is basically your dream life, and having a clear vision of what your dream life is will help. And a couple of things you can journal on this, or you can visualize. I like to visualize. So how I visualize is that I close my eyes and then I ask myself, like, um, how would future Jamie be like? Or how would future me? Um, be acting. What is the lifestyle that she's in? Where is she living? And um, what is she doing for a living? So these questions, when you ask yourself, you can journal it if you are a like a pen and paper person. Um, but you can do both as well. I personally do both. Sometimes I journal, but sometimes I use that journaling session to also visualize in my head so that it feels so real, like it feels like it has happened, and then it. 
it will kind of well the brain is is magical because when you build those neural pathways towards that dream life or that vision of yours subconsciously your body will know what actions to take you will just feel inspired by doing certain things and you have no idea why but if you follow the intuition it will guide you to that dream life and something that i also want to say like like a disclaimer is that well it's not about the destination right yes you can have a clear vision of what your dream life is but it's not about hitting those goals as fast as possible or it's not about just getting to the destination because it's the journey and it's the process that is going to teach us so much more than getting to the destination because if you only focus on the destination then what is going to happen is that your next question will be now what's next and then you're just going to keep chasing the next goal the next goal and you're never going to be happy so this also um links with having gratitude in terms of what you have right now and building it up towards your dream life and also on the way towards your dream life having gratitude of um the different phases of your life and different stages um towards that dream life of yours so yeah clarity is important oh yeah absolutely okay and what are some of the activities or um let's say some of the practices they can implement in their daily lives so that they can get to that destination they want to get to Mm -hmm. Hmm, there are so many things that one can do (laughs) and i'm just gonna throw out a couple that i that i personally used um that has worked really well firstly i said visualization right visualization is my favorite favorite manifestation technique because it's not just completely woo or spiritual it has some science behind it in terms of neuroscience like i said and building neural pathways towards it and by the way if anybody is interested in neuroscience and how manifestation is linked to science um i highly recommend reading the book by dr joe dispenza called breaking the habit of being yourself oh i love that that is an awesome book i love that and i've learned so much and it helps me ground my perspective uh, my perspective of manifestation so much because initially my perspective of manifestation was just oh i'm gonna script i'm gonna create my vision board <laughs> and it's all just gonna come but there's so much work behind it so yeah moving back to what i was talking about visualization um the tip about when you're visualizing is to be as specific as possible so if there's a specific vision that you want to have in terms of your future self like maybe let's say you want to be a life coach right Mm -hmm. you can visualize yourself coaching a bunch of women um on zoom or physically and then feeling into the inspiring energy of oh my gosh like i'm transforming people's lives and the transformation that they are experiencing is going to transform their lives and they're gonna you know bring it on and continue this to share it with other people and the key thing about visualization is not just bring not just in your head because a lot of the times all those manifestation techniques is just in the mind where you are just writing about it or thinking about it the key thing is to bring it down into the feelings side of it so embodying the energy of your future self um that is the key thing and then the second thing is to take inspired actions and visualize yourself as your future self taking these actions. Yeah, so that's going to be completely, completely life changing because often when we visualize and then we get out of our visualization, we get back to our old self or old programming where we just do things and then we're like, oh, this thing is this thing is frustrating. I don't want to do this or I don't like this. But if you embody the energy of your future self and be inspired to take that action, then it's going to shift so many things in terms of our like energetic vibration and that is going to help us attract opportunities or the right people that's going to help us so yeah don't underestimate the energy part of the thing because something i want to share is that results equals to actions plus energy oh yeah sure 
Yeah, it's just it's not just actions alone. You have to combine your actions with your energy, and I would say that the energy is actually like sixty percent of the yeah. equation. Yeah. Like action is only forty percent, and if you are able to combine and imbue your energy into your actions, that is gonna be you're gonna be a magnet <laughs> for wow. for your desires. That's so amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, something else that I also wanted to bring up is that in terms of manifestation, what you want to be careful of as well is to not rush the process or to not try to control um, like how things are going to turn out. Because often when we try to control all of these things, you are actually getting in your own way because your physical self, your mind, can't really see the bigger picture, right? Mm-hmm. Your higher self sees it the universe sees it and it's orchestrating things for you and sometimes it might give you something that you don't want or you it might give you something that is totally unexpected and you don't really want to look into that or you don't really want to receive that because it's not um what you asked for yeah like it's not what you asked for it's not according to your plan but just be open to the idea because if you are too tunnel visioned then sometimes you might like they are helping you, but you're just not seeing it, yeah? And you're blocking that off. So that's just something I wanted to also raise. Oh my God, this is so good. And one last thing, which is about how can, like, can people create their vision board? Like based on what? Based on what? Yeah, or just some simple tips about creating a vision board that is suitable to your desires and matches Mm -hmm. what you want. Yeah, so the thing about vision board is that I actually don't create that many vision boards. So yeah, like I have one that's on my desktop right now, but I think something that that I heard someone said and I really resonated with that idea is that Sometimes when we when we are creating our vision board, we we want things to be a certain way, yeah? Like I said, like yeah. we want to control that, oh, this is where I want to be, this is where I want to go, this is the type of car that I want. Um, and then we look for those pictures to create our vision board. But maybe you want to also try another different um, technique that of creating your vision board, which is just to like open up Pinterest and to look through, you know, the pictures that are on your Pinterest board or whatever you can type like vacation or you can type like a house and then just go through all the pictures and pick the one that you feel called to pick yeah in that way it reduces the possibility of your mind saying like oh this is what I want um and then trying to shut off what your heart really wants oh. yes yeah, so- so that is something that really I, I resonated with it so much because every time I'm creating a vision board, well, it's not that often, but when I created my first one, I didn't know which one to pick because my mind is like, oh, I want to have that. But my heart is like, oh, actually this one, this one is Better. nice, but it's not big enough. I want the big one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so just allow your heart. Like it's, it's supposed to be a very fun process. So don't like, limit yourself or anything like create a sacred space for yourself when you're creating your vision board burn a scented candle um you know play some relaxing music have your crystals at the side and then just just treat it as a fun and enjoyable process instead of this is something that i need to do yeah that will really help a lot oh this is a very good idea you're right about it um well for me too i i've got just my vision board on my desk top and uh, I don't have like a vision board here somewhere or yeah like I see that everything I have right now is like giving me energy and telling me that this is what I want in the future and it's it's just amazing and uh, well you have a podcast as well so can you tell us about this podcast what do you like um like what do you deal with in in there like just introduce us to it sure so yeah I do have a podcast and I love podcasting because I love speaking about different topics so on my podcast I basically talk about manifestation and I teach about manifestation in a very grounded practical and balanced way so like I said it's not just about thinking positive but it's about how can I 
you know, use my challenges as well to empower me and to inspire me. So that on my podcast, I usually share a lot about my personal life. <laughs> so that's like, sure. like my, that's where my audience and my clients get to know a little bit more about me and like dive deeper into specific struggles that I'm facing or challenges, and how. Um, they can learn from my struggles as well and implement it into their daily lives. So I share about mindset stuff, so limiting beliefs, how you can overcome it. I share a lot of, of journal prompts on there, um, and I share manifestation, of course, like I said, and also business because I'm someone who loves like business since I graduated from a business school, um, and I love the strategy as well. But um, in my personal experience. I found it really hard to just use the strategy alone because it never really like resonated with me. Yeah, I talk about business in a in a strategy way as well, but also putting in the energetic side of it, the spiritual side of it, and the intuitive side of business. So that's something that I absolutely love, and I yeah, I have weekly episodes that I. Upload every um, Friday, so that is where you would usually find me if you want to know more about me. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you guys go and visit her podcast. It's just amazing. Well, uh, I really love the vibes and everything when I checked it. Um, but uh, I really invite you to go and check it out. Okay. What about? All right. So, do you have a program? Well, you certainly do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you tell us more about the program you're offering right now and like like all the things included in there and what can like people who are interested in find there yeah sure so i have a couple of programs that i'm running right now so i'll just talk about them briefly because i will definitely share the links um with alice so she can you know put it in the show notes and you can find out more details about it um But since we've been talking about limiting beliefs a lot, um, a program that I would recommend you if you are really struggling with overcoming your limiting beliefs is my private coaching program called Life by Design. It's basically 10 weeks long. So what we will cover there is first finding clarity in your purpose and your mission because having clarity is important. If not, you have no idea where you're going to go. Um, And then we will be diving deep into your limiting beliefs, like what is blocking you, what is stopping you. And we don't just stop there. Once we found out the limiting belief, we're going to dive deep into what I said, exploring where this stems from and um, exploring how you can release some emotional attachment from that so that energy can be released to help you manifest your dream life. So that would be a huge chunk of it where I will be teaching you how to reprogram your subconscious mind um, from, you know, that limiting perspective to things that actually serve you, like replacing it with beliefs that actually serve you and how you can respond to those triggers and nip it in the bud when they come up for you in the future. So that's a big chunk of it. And then, of course, I will be diving into manifestation and whatever that whatever goals you have, right, we will also be working towards that alongside overcoming your limiting beliefs. So that is um, my private coaching program called Life by Design. Um The other thing I wanted to share is also um, a self-paced course that I have, which is understanding manifestation, the science of manifestation, and also understanding um, how manifest, how you can manifest from a balanced um, and more sustainable point of view instead of you know trying to be positive all the time and then experiencing that crash and fluctuating like crazy, right? So so yeah, that is called manifestation magic and that is open for enrollment so if you want to dive into that it is going to be a low investment compared to the um, private coaching which is going to be a um, I would say a high level coaching program so yeah manifestation magic it is and then the last thing I want to share is um, my group coaching program called the glow club and we're actually starting our next round in august and this one is basically for anybody who is just into your self-exploration self-discovery journey um you feel like 
there's a part of you that truly wants to show up as your true self, but you don't know who it is and you don't know how to get there. And you are just frustrated, but you know that you, there's something that's blocking you and you want to show up as your true self and to just shine unapologetically. So if that is you, this group coaching program is for you. It's called The Glow Club. And yeah, that is everything that I am currently offering. Oh my god, this is amazing. Like you've got really different programs for different purposes and this is just incredible. Uh, if you want to visit like um, and know more details about her, I'm going to put just a link in the description so that they can be redirected to you. Um, so is there a message like you want to share with all the women all over the world who are maybe struggling, who want to find their dream lives and want to live a more fulfilled life? So do you have a message to send them? Yes, I do have a message. <laughs> and my message is that you get to do life your way. That is huge because all my life, I I thought I needed to do it a certain way. I thought I needed to do it one way so that I can, you know, show up according to other people's expectations. But what I've realized is that you're not doing yourself a favor or anybody else a favor if you are playing small and you're trying to fit into the box that other people has have placed you in because you are so unique and so uniquely different that you shining this unique light you are going to help so many other women and it's it's out of your imagination but you just gotta trust that you have this unique gift and you have your own unique way of doing things there's no one like one cookie cutter or one size fits all way you get to do it yourself and you get to define success in your own terms as well so that's it yeah oh my god this is so inspiring and insightful thank you so much jamie so i would like to thank you for being today with us it has been a really enjoyable episode and moment filled with love compassion positive vibes like everything about good thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, thank you so much for having me anyway if you guys want to find like connect with me just follow me on my instagram at the dot white walls because i'm most active there and yeah, yeah you'll find most of the information on my instagram okay. anyway so Her yeah it's just amazing you're gonna like it well hi uh, thank you Ready. so much <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me it was so fun oh it was really fun and thank you so much for being here with us so all the positive vibes community is sending you so much love and well hopefully guys you are going to enjoy this like this time we spent together jamie and i and well don't hesitate to go and follow her on instagram and you know like the whole part <laughs> So, uh, thank you again. And uh, I think we've came up to the end of like our moment, our great moment together. Um, and if you've got anything you want to add, just go ahead. Yeah, um, I don't have anything to add. So I would just like to thank like you for listening if you are tuning in and I hope that this like whatever that I have shared ha has served you to some degree and you know if you resonated with the concepts feel free to use them if you didn't feel free to def just leave them because there will come a time where you will understand what we're talking about and there will come a time where you will I guess like the time will be right for you to explore and implement. So don't rush the process. Exactly. Thank you so much again. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in, for listening to us. We are sending you so much love from here and we wish you an enjoyable time. Be positive and accept your negativity as well as just Jamie recommended it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.